Friday, everyone. It's Eric Wilhelm here with Weather for Weather Geeks, the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. Today, a big improvement over the last couple of days with warmer temperatures and, hey, no snow. We came a long way this afternoon, though, after starting with a cold, frosty 29 officially at the airport this morning. We managed to get up to 63 this afternoon. That's pretty big, what we call diurnal range. Quick math, that's what, uh, 34 degrees? That's, uh, that's pretty impressive, but that uh, does happen a lot during the transitional seasons of both spring and fall when we have cold mornings, but the sun is still strong and can really uh, kick those temperatures up quite a bit as we get into the midday and afternoon. All right, I was hoping this morning that our camera pointed kind of east-southeast off our tower would have caught uh, the SpaceX launch off the Florida coast. Believe it or not, that SpaceX, SpaceX launch sending fresh astronauts up to the space station um, was visible all the way back into the Ohio Valley this morning because this uh, launch occurred right before sunrise, so the rising sun illuminated that uh, spacecraft really well. It put on quite a show down in the southeast, but I saw videos as nearby as Wheeling, West Virginia of this uh, launch. I was hoping our camera caught it, but no such luck. Uh, beautiful sunrise, though, anyway, this morning. And then we had uh, an increase in clouds for a while, midday and afternoon. Some mid-level cloudiness up at around 10,000 feet above our heads. Blotted out the sun for a time, but the sky is clearing this evening. So our 63 today, our first warmer-than-average day since the beginning of the week. Uh, we sandwiched in between. It was a very cool stretch, of course, during midweek. At one point earlier this month, we were 9 degrees warmer than the average. But the pattern change over the last two weeks has knocked... That number back, we're still above average for the month at 2.3 degrees above average. And with the forecast for next week, it is a uh, it is a lock that April is going to go into the record books as warmer than average. Not 9 degrees warmer than average, but probably on the order of somewhere between 2 and 3, maybe even a little more. I haven't done the math, um, but uh, looks awfully balmy in the last few days of April. Precipitation-wise, we need some rain. Uh, 1.77 is where we stand, and uh, I did not include... Uh, today's climate information in this uh, anomaly statistic, but as of last night, we were 0.74 inches, three quarters of an inch below average for the month of April, and it's been pretty dry around here, dating back to mid to late winter, and no surprise. Of course, much of our region is now highlighted in the drought monitor as either abnormally dry or even in a moderate drought, especially from around Route uh, 224 on north, we're technically in a moderate drought. We're not going to see any rain tonight. All the wet weather's out in the middle of the country, including a severe weather threat in far southern Oklahoma, parts of eastern and southeast Texas, parts of Louisiana as well. That severe weather threat will shift a little farther to the east, down into Mississippi and Alabama, and uh, parts of the Gulf Coast region as the weekend gets underway. Warmer air has moved into the eastern U.S., that is for sure. In fact, compared to 24 hours ago, on this map anyway, Youngstown has the biggest number on the map. We're 17 degrees warmer than the 6 o'clock hour on Thursday. But colder air is also on the march across uh, the parts of the upper Midwest, and this air mass change uh, will be felt around here by the end of the upcoming weekend. All right, before we get to the weekend weather, I just uh, because it's a pretty quiet evening, I did want to draw our attention towards... A uh, nice little treat this summer. Now, this is not the big eclipse that's happening in 2024, which will be a total solar eclipse of right over our region in April of 2024. But this summer, on June 10th, as the sun rises, an eclipse will be ongoing. And hopefully we'll have a nice clear sky at sunrise on June the 10th. This will be a total solar eclipse for parts of Canada in some very high latitudes. But around here, uh, the... Sun's face will be about 60% covered by the moon at about sunrise. This will start at sunrise. As the sun comes up, the eclipse will be going on. And then uh, the moon will be partially covering the sun up through 634 that morning. This will be pretty cool. Now, again, because it's right at sunrise, it's going to take 10 or 15 minutes until after sunrise before we can, you know, probably uh, tell, you know, kind of what's going on with a little more detail. But uh, still, hopefully a clear sky the morning of June 10th will be something to check out here in about, so what, six weeks, seven weeks or so? Uh, so the weather hopefully will cooperate. We certainly have a better chance of fewer clouds in June than we do in April. All right, as we uh, go into the weekend, I, I mentioned last evening on Weather for Weather Geeks that some of the modeling was trying to keep most of the rain to the south Saturday late in the day and into Saturday night. And I said I was keeping an eye on that, but I wasn't buying into that just yet. Well, as it turns out, those models 
picked up on the right idea, it looks like, a little sooner than some of the other modeling, and we've got a pretty good model consensus now that uh, the rain chances around here are not that hot, especially in our northern viewing area. But especially south of Route 224, we might still get grazed by some late rain, a few showers late Saturday, early Saturday night. But I've reduced our overall rain chances quite a bit in our forecast for later Saturday, Saturday nights. And, you know, it looked like we might pick up a third of an inch or so worth of rain at this uh, time yesterday. But now all the modeling is down near the bottom here. And, you know, I think we'll be lucky in some places to get a tenth of an inch. And some places might not even have a drop during the weekend. Best chance for a completely dry weekend, uh, again, north of 224 and especially north of Interstate 80. Here's a look uh, graphically at uh, one of our models uh, showing, you know, kind of a sharp cutoff, but uh, still a cutoff nonetheless, somewhere around our region between rain and no rain. Certainly the rain chances are higher as you go into southern Ohio. Uh, but if we do get grazed by a little wet weather, it's just late Saturday. I think by Sunday morning it's gone, and then... This is probably a little optimistic on the cloud cover on our model here Sunday. It's probably a fairly cloudy day still on Sunday, and temperatures will struggle behind this front. But it's a one-day cool down on Sunday because things are looking up already by Monday. Maybe some frost early in the day, but sunshine for the afternoon. So 63 on Saturday. I've raised our high temperature with the lowering rain chances. But then a chilly 54 Sunday, and that might even be a kind of a late morning high. I wouldn't be shocked if temperatures settled in the upper 40s to around 50. Sunday afternoon. All right, in the coldest sheltered valleys tonight, there may be some frost concerns once again. I think on average we'll drop down to 36, 37. But in some of the colder nooks and crannies, a 32 or 33 is going to be a possibility. So maybe another night where, eh, just as a precaution, bring in those hanging baskets, uh, cover up any sensitive, uh, sensitive plants, or bring them in tonight. A better chance of more widespread frost, I think, Sunday night and Monday morning as that high-pressure zone drifts across. Pretty clear night, calm winds, frost concerns for Monday morning. That'll be the last time we talk about frost concerns in the foreseeable future and maybe for the rest of the season. Midweek will be quite a bit warmer, of course, and also getting kind of muggy, actually, especially by late April standards. This is a very late spring-like pattern shaping up with a big trough coming into the Four Corners region. Out ahead of that, this looks like a severe weather setup for midweek across parts of the Plain States, eventually into the Deep South. And around here... Enough atmospheric moisture coming in by midweek that, yeah, it's going to be kind of muggy and the, and the overnight temperatures will not drop very fast. In fact, we might have a night or two where we don't drop below 60. Kind of a uh, summery midweek pattern and maybe some springtime thunderstorms as well, starting Wednesday afternoon and then maybe a better chance Thursday into Thursday night ahead of our next cold front. So no surprise in the 6 to 10 day precipitation outlook here from the Climate Prediction Center that wetter than average conditions are favored in this time frame. And while we don't want severe weather here locally, we do need the rain and uh, most of us would prefer it not come on the weekend. So maybe the timing on this would be pretty good. And then a lot of this would be Thursday into Thursday night and maybe first thing Friday morning. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you for watching Weather for Weather Geeks tonight and this week. And I will see you back here on Monday.